Electronic drummers here in Logic Pro for iPad 2 are really fun. And in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about how to use them. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome back to Logic Pro for iPad 2. Let's dive in and take a look at the electronic drummer. I've set up a nice little eight bar groove here in Logic Pro for iPad 2. If you wanna learn how to do all of this kind of business, check out the other videos linked in the description. To add an electronic drummer track, we're going to tap on the plus button here in the top left, go to session player and tap on drummer. And when our drummer comes up, we can change this to an electronic drummer by tapping right here in the drums and up the top here where it's got acoustic drummer, drop that down down, tap on electronic drummer. And you've got a heap of options here. You've got some electronic, you've got some hip hop, you've got some alternative, a heap of different styles for you to experiment with. For this track, it's kind of sounding a bit synth pop. So I'm going to tap on the synth pop option here and it's going to load up some of the sounds. Now, before we go through the interface and show you how to change everything, it will give us some default settings here. If you want to listen to those, just tap on the preview button. and tap again to stop. To listen to this with the rest of our tracks here, we just hit the play button. Let's go through the options. You have your complexity and intensity sliders and these tell the drummer how complex and intense to be. Everything from super complex and intense like this to super simple and super non-intense like this. So you can dial in every type of sound you could possibly want. In the middle are our pattern settings. Now with this first lot, we don't have either of these on. If we wanna turn those on, we can tap and tap, and these will turn on and off each of our different items. To go in and change our patterns, we tap on the pattern there, and we've got four different patterns here for this drum and cowbell. Let's go with pattern number four and tap out, and this will now add this to our sound. Let's preview. I think that sounds kind of cool. We can do the same with our other two sections here. So if you want to change up the hi-hat and the shaker, we can turn them off and back on, and we can change the pattern here by changing to a different pattern. And we can do the same with our kick, snare, and clap. Say so we don't want any claps in this, we can turn the claps off, tap in here, and go into our pattern browser and choose another pattern and get something like this. You'll also notice that in our kick and snare pattern here, we can actually follow the rhythm of either the chords track, which is on at the moment. We can turn that off and we can also follow another track. Say that we've got a bass track or we want to follow something else here within the kit. We can actually follow that, which is kind of cool. You don't have this option in your acoustic drum, but you can follow any of the other pieces as well as something like your bass or your synth track that we've already got added here. Your fill controls here, the amount of fills and the complexity. Let's turn these both up to 11 and come back and see what we get with these added all the way up. You get quite a lot going on there. Next is swing. If you've got a swing and kind of beat, you can turn that up and you can change from 16th to 8th notes there. Are you going to use swing in electronic music? Probably not, but it's there if you need it. It doesn't stop there though, because we have our details tab. Let's tap on details. This is similar to percussion. If you've played around with percussion, we have complexity ranges here. So for each of our different pieces that we're using, we can tell it how complex to be or how simple to be. So if we bring all these up to the top, the range is going to be quite complex. And if we drop these down to the middle here, it'll give more of a medium to complex kind of range. So it gives you a lot more scope in exactly how you're going to sound. And this introduces a certain element of randomness into your beat, which can make it really cool. But how often should it vary within that range? Well, that's where your phase variation comes in. If we turn this all the way up, you're going to get a lot of differences here. If we zoom in on this, you'll see now that we've got a lot of different stuff going on here. If we play our track back, it's gonna sound like this. So 
So lots of variation in that beat. The feel tells you whether you want a push or a pull, and I cover that in more detail in the drummer video you can check out in the description. Dynamics is how often it's going to go loud or soft. Do you want that to be consistent or do you want some variation there? Your tempo here, want a double time or a half time tempo? Let's tap a double time here and take a listen. Yeah, that's gonna be a little intense, but you can add that there and humanize you won't use this with electronic drums as much as you will with a regular drum or a percussion, but if you want it to not be quite on the grid, you can add some humanize there with your final slider. And finally, you have manual. If we tap on manual here, we can actually manually tap in. So if we've got our kick and snare, and we want this to be a very basic kind of kick and snare beat, instead of using over here in the main section, you can see that we've got a manual pattern now, and it's gonna now sound like this. We've left our double time on, go back to details and change this back to automatic. Let's try that again. So you've got complete control over exactly what your electronic drummer is going to do. Here in the bottom left, you've got the perform again button. This is cool because if we tap on this one, check it out, it'll just change things up. It might change a feel or it might change a couple of little parts. And every time we tap that, it's gonna do something a little bit different. So if you've dialed in your settings, but they're not quite right, hit the perform again button and you'll get something else. What if you don't want to code all this in yourself? You just want the computer to do it for you? Well, you can use your presets. If we come up here and tap on the presets, you've got a bunch of different presets for every different type. Let's say we wanted to go with the chart topper. You can see here, this will change up all of the settings here in the main and the details tab and we get something completely different. Straight to the top of the charts. This has just been one of the electronic drummers that we have here. Let's tap here and put some different ones in here. So we're not going to go through each of these. You can play with these in your own time, but say you wanted more of a modern house sound with this, let's tap on modern house. What this is going to do is change all of our different instruments in here. And with the change patch on there, it's also going to change the actual drum kit that we're using. I'll show you when we do the next one, what happens if we leave change patch off. If we tap off of there, now, if we hit the preview button, we get a different kind of sound. Let's try something else. If we tap here again, we want more of a trap beat for this one. We can tap here under hip hop and go to trap and that will change everything up again. And now we're gonna get some more hi-hats in there and more of a trap kind of beat. So lots of options here with your electronic drums. Now, what if I like this drum sound, but I actually want to use a different drummer? Well, we can do that too. If we tap here on the drummer, if we turn the change patch off, we can go back to say the modern 80s here. And now we're going to get that trap kit with a modern 80s sound. You can mix and match and get some really cool things like this. And bring it back in with our track. to manually change the instrument patch you're using. We can tap down here in the bottom left and go to the browser. And here are all the instrument patches. I'm just going to reset these. I've been playing around looking at some other things. So here are all of the different things we can use. I'd recommend with this, you go to drums here and come across here to electronic. If you're using the electronic drummer, you can mix and match and use your acoustic drums with your electronic drummers. You'll get some unique kind of sounds there. But from here, we can choose what kit we're going with. So let's just say we wanted to try this doing science kit to preview it, we tap here. Sounds kind of cool, right? And with your replace on, all we need to do to bring this in is tap on it and it's actually gonna change it up. See how it's changed our kit there. Now when we preview our sound, it's going to be using this kit with our sound. If we don't have that on there, all we need to do is grab another one, say this Future Flex and tap and drag and drop it onto our track and it's going to change there as well. And we're gonna get a sound like this. 
a few more options here that we can play with. In the top right here, if we tap on this one, we can lock our settings, our fills, our swings, and our settings here, and that's going to blank these out so you won't change them by accident. Next up, we've got these three dots here. We can load the default patch. So if we've played with all of this and we're like, oh no, I've ruined it, just tap on load default patch, and it's going to load everything back to the way it was. You can also do this to recall all the default settings if you've changed some things around and go back to the start. There you have it, so many cool options here in the electronic drama in Logic Pro for iPad 2. So much more to learn, so much more to explore. Check out the other videos down below if you'd like to learn more. Hope you found this one useful. I'll see you next time.